a hole in the wall. For most of my life, I see now with hindsight, there was a large and solid wall firmly dividing my experience of God from my experience of everyday living. God, as far as he figured it all in my scheme of things, was Sunday business, and the business of Monday to Saturday had a considerably bigger share of my attention. Even when I started to grow more aware of spiritual things and take God more seriously, all that happened was that this inner wall shifted a bit, and the God side of it expanded, while the world side shrank in significance. How wrong can you be? I began to find out how wrong I was being when someone did a very simple thing. He, very gently, removed a brick from my wall. I hardly noticed the operation at the time, but I noticed its effects. All at once, I could see the other side. Whichever side I happened to be standing on at a given time, it was always possible to see through this wondrous hole in the wall. And it was impossible to keep Sunday away from weekdays any more. From then on, I could not keep God out of my world, my every day, my business. Nor could I keep my every day out of God's way. The defences were breached, and the wall that had seemed so solid and fixed turned out to be just a flimsy divider that had its foundations in my own mind. My search for God, from then on, could not be separated from my everyday living. I realized, increasingly, that God's search for me and for all of us was taking place in every aspect of my lived experience. Not a single choice or action or relationship could be made or lived out outside of the light of God that was streaming through the hole my friend had made. And all he did to make the hole was to point out the genuine connection between very specific things that were happening in my life and some of the strands of my longing and searching for meaning, for truth and for God. He placed these two threads in my hand, and side by side, the thread of faith and the thread of life, and together we let God begin his weaving. My hope and my prayer is that the reflections shared in this book will help to remove a few bricks from that flimsy but so unyielding wall that separates our journeys in faith from our journeys through daily life. This is an adventure into prayer which will call us to pass freely and frequently backwards and forwards across the boundaries of prayer and life until we find that there never was a boundary except in our own perceptions. I recently heard it said that we inherit far more than we ever create. The legacy that I have inherited is huge and can never be adequately acknowledged. I would, however, like to express my deepest gratitude to Brian McClory 
for removing that first crucial brick and for encouraging me to explore both sides of the wall and for supporting my often wayward wanderings with patience and unfailing encouragement. To Jerry Hughes, for the precious gift of his personal companionship on my journey, and for the deep well of his wisdom and experience from which he allows me to draw so freely. To Teresa Foster, who walks so many gritty paths with me and never fails to direct my gaze to the diamonds among the stones. My warmest thanks go to my husband Klaus and my daughter Kirsten, who are often the first revealers of God's action in our everyday living. And they give me so much support and encouragement in so many ways, and soul champions through the years, especially my friends from the Stoke-on-Trent. My gratitude goes very specially to those who have allowed me to share something of their stories in these pages. I first began to write the material in this book in response to requests from groups of Christians seeking to deepen their life of prayer, and so I would like to think of those groups particularly for their welcoming openness, their infectious enthusiasm, and their ongoing friendship, I think especially of the people of St. Michael's, St. Margaret's, St. Andrew's, St. Barnabas in Stoke-on-Trent, and the people of St. John the Baptist in Tamworth. Thus the friends of our living become the friends in our believing, and the wall that divides us from God and from each other, gradually crumbles. I think of all who have shared with me their journeys of faith in life and life in faith. They have allowed me to walk with them along their personal holy ground. There is no greater gift that we can give each other than that. And I thank all who have inspired in me the trust to share my own journey with them. Stories and resonances from many of these journeys pervade the pages of this book. They stream through the holes in our walls and dissolve our demarcations. Perhaps the cover illustration shows something of this process in action. A heart opening to God and also open to all the colours of the world. This is the dynamic prayer that this book explains. But there is a long road stretching between thoughts and feelings of prayer and the pages of a book. And I would like to thank those who have built the road. Morag Reeve, Helen Porter, Alison Ward, and all friends and colleagues at Danton, Longman and Todd, for their hard work and unfailing encouragement. Roy Levette for the skill and vision embodied in the illustrations, and Peter McClure for his skillful lettering, and Sarah John for the beautiful cover. Walls for breaking through, and roads for reconnecting. My thanks go to everyone in time or eternity who has removed barriers, opened gateways, and travelled roads with me.